all finished for the year? How does it feel to be able to take a couple of weeks off then? Yeah, it feels really good. Um, we've definitely bought in really well during this break, or during the sorry, the first start of pre-season during November and December, and um, we're running really well. And everyone's there's a bit of youthful exuberance around the place at the moment. Um, we're really excited for 2017, so yeah, it's a really good feel at the club. It's never completely uh, a break. You've still got it, mm. and you've still got a program. What's yours? Yeah, so um, with every break, we've got a we've got a program to follow. Um, the S and C staff hand out a two week program, so we've got a bit of running to do, a bit of strength. Um, it's more so just ticking it over, so you come back in the best shape that you can. Um, we have a three kilometre time trial when we get back on the first day, so. Um, yeah, just work towards that and stay fit and healthy and enjoy the break. How's pre-season gone for you so far? What's been your focus? Yeah, pre-season for me has been really good. Um, it's just about making sure you're injury free and staying out on the track. And um, each each pre-season, you sort of build your fitness a little bit more, and um, you're able to complete the sessions a little bit better. So um, coming into my third pre-season now, um, you build that fitness base a little bit more and. Um, my main focus probably at the moment is just yeah, building that fitness and being able to run our games a little bit better. So that's definitely what I'm aiming to do this year. Um, and obviously that focus on skills. Skills is the most important part of any game. So that's what I'm focusing on. Connor, was there one aspect this year that you thought you'd need to improve? In particular, it was kicking, handball, running, position? Defence. Yeah, a bit, bit of everything. Are you <laughs> highlighting yeah. if you want to? No, no, no. Thanks. Usually, finish the season, the coach has said, look, maybe you think, well, that's probably going for one cup. Was there anything for you? Or? Um, yeah, you sort of stated a few, a few of them there, but um, I think if you want to become a complete player, you have to work on everything all the time. Um, certainly build on your strengths and make them, keep them your strengths, but also focus on the weaknesses as well. So. Um, as I said, my running, um, you always need to get fitter, especially if you want to be a midfielder in today's day, day and age, um, you've got to have a pretty good tank. So building on that um, in this pre-season, again, as a name, and then um, definitely my skills as well. Are you, what do you like at Christmas time, discipline-wise? you no plum pudding, all that sort of stuff, no cream, no chocolates, or are you just going to do the running and have a good time and come back fresh? No, I'd definitely do the running, but um, my family, have pretty good cooks. My grandma's a really good cook as well, so um, I definitely enjoy a bit of Christmas ham and pavlova and those sorts of things. But um, as as Ross and the coaching coaching staff say, make sure you wake up, get the work done, and then you've got the rest of the day to enjoy yourself. How are you feeling this year uh, compared to you know some of those newer years? Are you feeling more relaxed in the group this year? Yeah, definitely. I think um, when you first come in, you just so you so like excited and don't really know what to expect in a way. Um, but definitely in this third year, um, you sort of you know the expectations, you know what the goals are, what you need to do when you get back from the off season and the Christmas break. So I think, um, and knowing the game plan over a few years now, you certainly you're not you're not relaxed, but you're, you're certainly more composed in what you need to do and um, how you're going to go about the year and what you need to achieve. So um, each year, yeah, definitely becoming a bit more composed in what I want to do and how I want to do it and um, how to get there. You try and take on a leadership role with those younger guys you can relate to them obviously coming in only three years now do you do that already with the leadership or do you, is that something maybe further down the track and you just focus on yourself a bit more at the moment still yeah i think it's pretty easy with um obviously having that age where you're pretty pretty similar ages to the new guys that come in i'm only two years older than them so um you definitely have that have that experience of being a new player coming through the door so you sort of um, you go out and have coffee with them and um, just sit down with them and get to know them, where they're from, um, what's, what's their interests outside of footy because you've got to have a life outside of footy of course. Um, so I think, yeah, especially myself, Ed Langdon, Lockie Weller, Ethan Hughes, those sorts of guys, um, yeah, we've been there, we've been through the door all nervous and uh, don't know what to expect. So I think, um, yeah, we, us as younger guys and Cam Suckliffe, um, Lock in here, those sorts of guys who are in the younger bracket um, can certainly help the new guys. With the players coming back from injury, Nat Fife included, does that make the prospect of trying to get yourself in the best 22 tougher again next year? Yeah, definitely. There was a lot of um, key injuries last year, um, so I think competitions for, for spots is going to be really healthy this year. I think um, the inclusions of the guys that we traded in, they're all really handy players as well. So. Um, this competition for spots is going to be healthy for the club and it will strengthen 
us as a club at Fremantle level and at Peel level as well. So um, at the moment, everyone's just training really hard and um, we're training really well. So it's, all, it's very exciting at the club at the moment. And yeah, competition for spots will be pretty tough. And Connor, what was your reaction when you heard one of your teammates had retired? Yeah, it was um, obviously it's disappointing for Shane, but I think yeah the the club obviously um, sent out a media release and it's disappointing for him, but um, his personal life is a lot more important than football at the moment. So the club's supporting him in every way, and um, hopefully he can overcome this and um, hopefully have a healthy future. Do you understand why he did it? And do you think it was the right thing for him that knowing him? Yeah, definitely. He um, he had constant talks with the club and his manager, and I think um, he he thought about it for a long, long time. He he had personal leave from the club before, um, and came to the conclusion that this was best for him and his family and um, his personal life. So um, yeah, he's definitely made the best decision for him. It was looking good. Is it? How big a blow do you think it is, perhaps, to your forward line? Yeah. He, Shane's a very talented player and um, as we saw last year in the six games that he's played, he's, um, he's got a bit of X factor to him, sorry. Um, but I think there's also younger guys coming through, so it gives you an opportunity for a Josh DeLuca and, um, and then obviously Michael Walters to step up again and Hayden Ballantyne. So um, as Shane, he's a, he's a very talented player, but then again, we've got a strong, strong forward line and a strong list, so I think um, we should be able to cover that hole. A lot of people are saying Cam McCarthy's impressed a lot of the, a lot of the boys. How have you found sort of training with him and what he can do and what he mm. probably potentially can do? Yeah, he's impressed me as well. He's um, he's a really quick sort of lead up forward, and I think um, it's pretty exciting watching what he's doing at the training at the moment. I think um, he's he's training really well, and Shane Kirsten's strong in rehab, and uh, Bradley Hills obviously won our time trial, and he's really fit and offers a bit of run as well. So um, all the guys that we've Recruited have shown really good um, poise and promise, so it um, looks really exciting for us. Colin, what are your personal goals for next year? Yeah, at the, so at the moment, yeah, it's just to um, build on that fitness base at the moment, um, work on that and the skills and just the, the game plan knowledge. And then, um, as I said before, the competitions for spots is going to be pretty, pretty high up there, so. Obviously, just trying to get a game first, but then um, from there, just keep working on those things that um, I needed to work on from last year, and hopefully, just become a bit more comfortable at the level, and then just build on build on that. But um, at this stage, it's a bit hard to look into the future because we've got such an intense training block at the moment. So, Ross was um, you've spoken publicly that Ross was a bit critical about defensive running with you. Do you do you target that time trial when you come back and say I want to? top five or top ten? Yeah, it's almost just trying to be your own personal time um, is, is the, the aim and compared to the group that doesn't really matter too much but um, just yeah hopefully building on my, my best is the aim and then go on from there but um, obviously with a better tang I can run better and do better at the, um, the defensive acts as well. Any update on Harley Bernal? Is he back from Germany around the group yet? Or? Yeah, he, he came in today. Um, he walked a few laps, so um, he's back and he's refreshed and um, yeah, he's ready to go. Did you have a chat to him about how it was over there and how it all went? Yeah, yeah, I had a little chat to him. Um, yeah, he said it was it's pretty interesting, but he, he enjoyed his time and he's, he's back and ready to go.